Computational social scientists have a saying, don't trust your computer. Well, they don't, but maybe they should. Now we've seen this before, it's the logistic equation or the logistic map. And the idea here is that this formula is iterated. So the value for P in the next time period is determined in part by the value of P in the current time period. So time period 10 depends on what happened in time period 9. Time period 50 depends on what happened in time period 49. And this is a mathematically equivalent way of writing that equation. So this and this are identical. And you can get from one to the other with, with extremely simple mathematics, uh, just some factoring that you would have learned in high school. Now let's see what happens when we run these formula through a spreadsheet package. So here we are in Google Docs. We've opened up a worksheet and we've got a value up here for our parameter r, and we've put in a value of three for that. And down here, we've got p equals 0.01 for the first version of the formula, and p equals 0.01 for the second version of the formula. And there is the first version. There it is up there. And we get a result of 0.0397. And there's the second version, which is mathematically identical, mathematically equivalent. And indeed, we do get the same answer, 0.0397. So let's iterate this a few times and see what happens. So let's take it down. I've got 70 times. I think there's a good result at 70. And there it is. So the result from the first formula is 1.03, if you round it. And the result for the second formula is 0.31. And depending on what this was measuring, that could be a huge difference. So it's the same piece of software running on the same computer, mathematically equivalent formula, and it's giving a vastly different result. Now we can sort this out if we run the result before displaying it. So if I do that, I can use the round function to round it to two decimal places. And now the result is 0.04. And if we iterate this, we will get identical results, and we always will. So if we go up to 70, the result is 0.0. Sorry, not 0.66 for each. There it is. Now that's quite a big difference. And that's caused by rounding errors. It's caused by the computer having a limited amount of memory to store each number, a limited number of decimal places. And in that spreadsheet package, it's probably storing 15 or 16 decimal places. And this would be a, a problem for a computational social scientist. One of the tools that they use is called agent-based modeling. And in an agent-based model, we've looked at this before, you create a model of a situation and that model is run in discrete time periods. So the stuff that happens in time period five is determined by the stuff that happened in time period four. The stuff that happens in time period 10 is determined by the stuff that happened in time period nine. So these rounding errors would be a problem for a computational social scientist. Now for a mathematician studying chaos, studying chaotic behaviour in formula, this isn't a problem. And the reason it isn't a problem is because of something called the shadowing lemma. Now a lemma is just like a theorem, only it's not important enough to be called a theorem. It's something that is used to prove other theorems. So it's, a math math it's been mathematically proved but it's not important enough to be called a theorem in its own right. And the shadowing lemma says that even if the results of an equation like this 
deviate from what this should be because of uh, limitations in, in a computer. It doesn't matter because if the output is not determined exactly by the input that the equation was given, it has been determined by some theoretically valid input and therefore it is valid to study. Now that might sound like magic if you've not come across this before, but one way of trying to explain it is if I tried to draw you a picture of our pet hamster, you probably wouldn't be able to use it to pick out our hamster from a lineup, but you might be able to use it to determine that I was actually intending for it to represent a hamster. So my drawing is good enough to capture some of the characteristics of a hamster, but it hasn't been based truly on the, the input that it was supplied on shortbread, the hamster. When you're running an agent-based model, the trick that was used in the example of rounding to two decimal places might not help because behind the scenes, the computer might still be storing the, the number with 15 or 16 decimal places. So if you want to get around this problem, you need to make sure that you're rounding and not storing those digits in the background. Now we can see that the round function is actually getting rid of the decimal places completely by doing a simple calculation using one of those values. So if we add one to one of them, we get 1.04. And if we up the decimal places, we do not start getting the numbers back in the decimal places. So using the round function in this instance has controlled the errors that we're getting. Now we found quite a, a difference after 70 time periods. And that's not very long at all. In fact, if you were studying finance, so if you had an equation like this to represent money, 70 time periods is really not that long. That might represent 70 days. It might represent 70 weeks. It might represent 70 months, even if it represents 70 years. A huge difference in the output would be a major problem. And if people are implementing software for use in banks and use in applications that uh, where accuracy matters a lot, they will have to make a decision about how these sort of errors are kept under control. And there used to be a thing called a salami attack and a salami attack was where someone skimmed off the remaining decimal places from a finance calculation that nobody worried about. A salami attack was made famous by Richard Pryor in Superman 3. So there it is, that's why you shouldn't necessarily trust your computer.